One reason you might create a view is to help users focus on their own work within a library or a list. In this case, there are documents in this library that I have a personal attachment to. They're documents that I created or documents that I modified. And the odds are good that they're the same documents I'll have to return and modify in the future. So I'd like to create a special Gini view that shows me the documents that I created or the documents that I modified. It's kind of easy to do that. Let's create just one for modified so you can begin to see how you might do that. So there we go. And I could save this view. And I could say that this is only Ginny. I could even make it a personal view so that only I would see it and no one else would. And when I could quickly move to the only Ginny view, they'd all be amazed and they'd say, well, I wish I had a view like that. And Mark would want a view and a key would want a view and Gerald would want a view. And sooner or later, everybody would want their own view. And they'd be creating them or they'd be asking the IT support staff to create them. And we'd have 700 views for our 700 employees. There's an easier way. I can create a view that says, let me see who it is who's logged in and let me then show them the documents that they might care about. This kind of view is called a dynamic view and it's incredibly powerful because it gets us out of the business of creating several views for different individuals. So I'm going to go to that only Ginny view real quickly and modify this view. And one of the choices is to delete it. And I'm just going to get rid of it. Now, let's create a view that will pay attention to who's logged in. Let's create a new view based on all documents. Good reason to keep it around. And this view is going to be called My Docs. Now, when you say My, the assumption is that it's actually focused on one user. If we were looking at a page called My or a list that included the word My, there'd also be the nuance that it would be something that user could customize. In this case, they can't. We're creating it for everyone, but it's still a good thing to have. And I'm not going to make this a personal view because then only I could see it. It would be like that special Ginny view. We're going to create a public view, and in that way, we're going to create a special view for every single user who can log in. Because I used the All Documents view as my starting point, my documents are sorted by name already. All I need to do is filter. So show items only when the following is true. When modified by is equal to me. Now that me goes in a set of brackets, not parentheses, not braces. If you forget anything about how to use me as a variable in a view, you'll find some help about it right here on the left. This would show me documents that I modified last. If I also want to be able to see documents that I created, then I would also have to say, or it's true, that created by is equal to me. When a view includes me as a filter, what SharePoint does is it looks up and it says, who's me? Ah, Ginny Quarter. Got it. Let me go ahead and click OK. And there's the My Docs view applied. Notice that there are some documents here that other people modified that probably means that I created them to begin with. What would happen if someone else logged in here? Well, let's go take a look. Let's have someone else log in and see what their experience is of this particular view. So here we are in another browser window and Mark Lassie is logged in. So when Mark goes in and chooses My Docs, Mark only sees documents that he created or modified. That's how this view works. SharePoint says, who's me? Ah, Mark Lassie, and shows him this particular view. Now, there's another variable that we can also use to create a dynamic view, and it's a time-based variable. Let's go take a look at how we can use today as a variable in a view. I'd like to create a view that would show me documents that were either modified or created recently. Let's say in the last three days. How do I choose three? I've got a lot of documents coming in this library, so I don't want to have a list of 50 new documents, just a few. It might be that if I have a library where there aren't as many new documents, I might say documents added in the last week or documents added in the last month. It works the same no matter what duration of days you choose. Let's go ahead and create a new view. And I've been going here to the call out to do that. But remember that you can always go to the library and say, I'd like to be able to create a view and you'll go to exactly the same place. We're going to use all documents as our starting point. 
and this is going to be new docs. Now, if I intend to create several views, one for documents in the last 30 days, one for documents in the last week, one for documents in three days, new isn't helpful in this context. So I might say something like new three docs for documents in the last three days. Now all I need to do is apply a dynamic filter. Show only items where the following is true. First, documents created in the last three days. Well, that would be created is greater than or equal to today minus three. Now, if I leave a space in here, I'll actually get an error when I save this. It's a formula, just like in Excel, we don't throw any extra spaces in there. Or we're modified is greater than or equal to. Now, if I just chose greater than, I would only see documents that were exactly three days old. Greater than or equal to gives me the last three days. Today, minus three. Okay, and here are all of the documents that have been modified or created within the last three days. So, if we visit this document library in a week and nothing new has been posted, then we would expect that new three docs would show us nothing. New three docs isn't a great name, so I'm going to go back and modify the view. And the view name is new three docs in the web address includes new three docs. I'm simply going to say new in past three days. Okay, looks good. So dynamic views created using me or today are powerful ways that we can filter information. I don't need to make a view for January, February, March, and April. I can simply make a view that says created in the last 30 days, and I will always see that no matter what month of the year it is. I don't have to create a view for Ginny and a key and Mark. I simply need to create a view that's my documents, a view for me, and it will work for everybody. So today and me, two really powerful ways that you can create dynamic views in SharePoint 2013.